Um, welcome everyone from uh, coming off of the ball fields. I hear T-ball was a hot item tonight as was lacrosse and I'm sure many other sports it's that season. Um, the, tonight is Monday, May 4th, the school board budget workshop being held in the high school learning commons. Um, this meeting is being recorded to replay on our local channel, local camp cable channel. I'll slow down, I've had a lot of coffee. Um, the purpose of this meeting is to discuss the town council reduction of the school board budget to reflect a 0% tax rate increase. This 11th hour request comes after months of deliberation by the board, preceded by a month or so of budget building by our teachers and district leadership. As many of you know, these budgets are built from the ground up every year and begin with classroom and building leadership requests. After deliberating as a group with the superintendent, the budget was formally presented to the board on Wednesday, February 25th. We have met five or six times since then, answered numerous emails and conversations with our constituents. This effort was a process by which we stress tested requests and in an open and transparent dialogue to try and reach consensus with all of our key stakeholders from parents, teachers, administrators, while keeping the taxpayer in mind. We didn't always agree, but that's understandable. It is true that that's what democracy is all about. What we did do was have a meaningful dialogue. That communication and trust and transparency is vital if we are to continue to move in the direction of working together. Before we begin, I want to underscore the importance of respect for one another's opinion. In such moments as this, it is important to remember that we really just all want the same thing, maybe from just a slightly different perspective. My expectation is at the end of tonight's meeting, we will formulate a response to the town council derived from all of our input. With that said, I suggest that the meeting go as follows, and I'm open to suggestions from the board. Um, comments from the public, followed by dialogue on suggestions from the school board on areas that we would like to see protected, followed by suggestions from the superintendent, then we should deliberate and decide. Any suggestions to the changes in that lineup? I'm a little confused. Areas we want protected? Yes. That's everything. I mean, I, I just, I don't understand that topic. Well, maybe it will become clear when we get there. Okay. I can't disagree with you, for sure. Uh, do you have any changes to the agenda as proposed? Except no, no changes, but I don't understand that one. But. Thank you. Um, with that said, I would like to open up comments from the public. Um, previously, we've requested that we keep comments to under three minutes so that everyone has a chance to decide, or not decide, deliberate and share. So if anyone would like to go first. Thank you. If you could just state your name. My name is John Voltz. I'm a resident here in Cape Elizabeth, and I have two children in Cape Elizabeth schools. I'd like to state that I'm extremely disappointed in the town council and their uh, decision to reject the careful, thoughtful, deliberative process of creating the school board budget. Um, I think it puts everyone in a very awkward position. I think you worked very hard to come to a um, deliberative process uh, that reflected and weighed uh, all of the different costs and savings and risks inherent in the school budget process. Um, in reading some of the comments from the town councilors as published in the Bangor Daily News, it seems to, they seem to believe that the <coughs> state funding is 100% assured. And as discussed in the final budget um, discussion uh, around contingencies, that is often not the case. Um, and it would seem to me that given that, it might make sense that the entire amount they are requesting uh, to be trimmed from the budget come directly out of contingency as they believe there is no risk whatsoever in the state funding. Um, I'm also in the process of uh, working to urge the town council to reverse its posi uh, position and uh, restore the entire school budget, which I think you uh, 
uh, arrived at through a laudable democratic open process. Um, there's a petition available if anyone is interested at, um, if you go to tinyurl.com slash full budget. It's been up for a few minutes now. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bolt. Hello. My name is Amy Stanley. I live at 10 Abaco Drive in Cape Elizabeth. I'm a parent of three children in the schools, two at the high school and one at the middle school. I am here tonight to express my disappointment in the town council for its recent unexpected decision to reject the school board's proposed budget and to demand a revised budget proposal with a 0% tax rate increase. I oppose the town council's decision for both substantive and procedural reasons. Substantively, the budget that the town council has asked for would result in cuts to school programming and staff. These cuts would compromise the quality of the exemplary school system that we as a community have carefully cultivated. Many of us choose to live here in no small part because the, of the promise of the excellent schools available to our children and um, the town's youngest citizens. I believe it is our moral responsibility as a community to offer a strong educational foundation for our town's children. I am not alone. An average of 68% of voters have approved spending increases much larger than the one proposed this year for the last seven years. The decision of the town council last week, I believe, shirks this responsibility. Procedurally, from my vantage point, the vote last week verged on procedural dishonesty. As I understand it, the town council voted vote took place <coughs> not in chambers, but instead in the basement of the town hall and was not recorded. So citizens are left to guess how this result was arrived at. From what I have read in the Courier, I was under the impression that the town council was making every effort to make its deliberations more open and transparent. Last week's vote seems to be the very opposite of open and transparent. This process stands in contrast to the school board's deliberative budget process. The su superintendent's recommended budget, which was shaped by very specific requests from teachers and administrators, as I understand it, was first presented to the board and the public months ago. Board members, and importantly, members of the public, had a chance to consider it, question it, and debate it. <clears throat> the, the specific proposals in the budget through a series of several workshops over many months. I followed these public workshops through the videos available on the web. I did not hear a single citizen who spoke out, and there were many, who asked the board to cut spending. As an engaged citizen following this process, I have the impression that the superintendent, as well as the board, endeavored to carefully balance their duty for fis fiscal restraint with the responsibility to maintain and strengthen Cape schools. In the absence of being deliberative, the town council left this member of the public with the sense that its vote was rash, results-oriented, and most importantly, antithetical to the public's interest in strong schools. For these reasons, I hope that the budget the town council ultimately sends to the voters is the one initially recommended by the school board after careful consideration. Thank you, Ms. Stanley. Thank you. Hi, um, I'm Mary Townsend. Can you can you guys hear this? Um, uh, I live at Five Pearl Street, and as a former board member, I was shocked to hear the news that um, the town council had not approved the budget because having lived through. Um, five or six budgets myself, I've seen more onerous budgets and more difficult times. Um, and I also was shocked that there was no way to follow this. There was no um, taped meeting. So I, I was left wondering what happened. A, a couple things I know from being a former board member is number one, um, working with Meredith. She is a very creative and frugal um, budget maker. Um, I've always been impressed with her budgets, and as um, and actually sometimes I've wanted things um, added back in, and um, you know I can think of a few instances where we've had to add things back in. 
Um, and I know this process took a lot of your time, your valuable time. Um, so, uh, you know, I'm very interested in what the thinking process was from the council. And I'd like to suggest, I know you have to, by law, um, present a 0% budget to them, but I would like to suggest to the counselors in the audience that you <coughs> reconsider um, the 0% and um, you know, you take another vote in public on camera so we can understand what you were thinking um, and understand the thought process that goes behind um, asking you know, them to cut um, a budget that seems, it seems to be the most frugal budget that they've presented so far. Um, so I'd like to see a re-vote um, on camera so the public can understand your thinking process. Uh, thank you, and thank you, school board, for all of your work and Superintendent Nadab. I know it's been a long journey. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Sarah Lennon. I live at 54 Cranbrook Drive. I apologize. I don't have any notes. Um, but I feel compelled to stand up here with a little history because I was back on the council when the um, school consolidation law went in and was there before that actually. And it was very, very contentious times before the school budget, um, the consolidation law required that citizens vote on the school budget for people who aren't as old as I am. And um, when that law passed, we were all happy because we thought, phew, as elected officials, we don't have to make this decision anymore. It's up to the citizens, as it should be. It's their tax dollar. So the first year that that went into effect, um, the, the <coughs> school board said we need a 6% increase, and the town council said, well, that feels way too high for us. We're going to put out a 4.6. <coughs> and the public went ballistic. And um, we had a vote no to low campaign. And amazingly, um, more people voted no on the budget than yes and turned it down because it was too low, which seems extraordinary when you consider that this budget is 1.8. But I think the reason they did that wasn't so much the numbers, but they were taking issue with the process because they felt that the spirit of the law was school board budget directly to voters. Because school board members are, of course, also elected officials, just as well as the, school, as the town council. And if the public doesn't like what the school board's doing, well, they can elect someone else. So um, I won't bore you with the details, but basically it took three votes um, and a lot of ill will in the town. I just remember one on Saturday, people literally screaming at each other at the transfer station. Um, and the final um, vote was a compromise, and it wasn't approved till September 3rd. So the school, people could not literally put together their budget. They couldn't figure out which teachers would be back. It was mayhem. So I guess with that as a back, and since then, for the next seven years, the town council never sort of intervened. They put forth the school board budget, and it all seemed to go well because they always won with large margins, um, you know, 68%, 73%. So I guess I was surprised when this happened because I felt like we kind of had this rolling. Um, and I just <coughs> guess, um, what am I saying? I guess that I feel that um, a positive outcome is almost always dependent upon a good process. I think like life is like 90% process. And I'm afraid that this latest thing is throwing the process into potential stress and bad feeling. And I feel like it's for a very small amount of money. We're risking the goodwill not only of citizens, but also of elected members, of, of elected officials that should be working together collaboratively, particularly if the council is looking for tax relief going forward, which I applaud that, I really do. Mm -hmm. It's going to take a collaborative effort between all these boards and also educating the citizenry of the need for tax reform. Because I know the council's worried that, um, that increases every year are, are ultimately unsustainable. They look at graphs, they look at charts, it's their, right, the fiduciary future of the town is their responsibility. I get that. But I feel like it might be more productive to address that in a more um, collaborative, deliberative, and longer term way than simply in the ninth hour to um, change what's now become almost tradition over seven years. So sorry for rambling, but that's a little history. And I just will say that I'm concerned um, if this goes 
forth as a zero, that people will become upset over process, not the numbers themselves. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. Is there anyone else from the public who would care to comment? Hi, my name is Elizabeth Cyphers. Uh, two children in the school district, and I too am a former board member. And um, please do excuse me; I don't have notes. I'm just in from a tennis match. Um, I too was really shocked and disappointed having participated in these um, budget presentations for the past three years. It felt like we had gotten to a very collaborative process, and we I, we would walk into a room where we all sat together, intermingled together around a table and worked through the budget and um, I felt like there was a lot of mutual respect in the room when we were working through the budget presenting it to town council and I felt like we had come a very long way from eight years ago and so to have this happen in the basement of council chambers not on TV not taped to a citizen who is no longer an elected official and not a part of this, these proceedings anymore, it felt almost <laughs> shameful, it felt hidden, it felt like a backdoor deal, and um, it was very upsetting. I think that, that the citizens of this town really deserve to hear how this decision was reached, why the council felt that such an incredibly modest budget needed to be reduced when other areas of municipal spending are increasing. So I would echo Mary Townsend's recommendation that for the good of this entire town, that we put everything out in the open and, and work through this the way the board worked through the budget. Be responsive to the citizens, hear the citizens before making a vote. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Elizabeth. <coughs> Are there any other public comments? Okay, well, seeing none, um, I, we will close uh, the public comment portion of our meeting this evening. Um, and we will turn to dialogue from the board on suggestions on what areas to protect from the budget. But before we proceed as a board, I would like to turn the meeting over to our finance chair, and if he could, Mr. Moore, um, give us a little background on, on how we came to where we are today. Sure, thank you, uh, Joe. Uh, Michael Moore, uh, School Board Finance Chair. Uh, as many of you in the audience know, because um, you've attended uh, the six workshops, uh, the budget process actually be begins long before the superintendent uh, presents the budget. Uh, the school board meets and looks at some longer term goals for the district, looks at longer term plans developed in collaboration with the town council, such as the capital stewardship plan, and make sure um, expectations uh, in the community and as well as goals and discussions with uh, stakeholders as well as the town council are reflected in the budget. And I'll touch on that later regarding one of the larger budget increase items, which is the capital improvements spending that was jointly developed working with the town council. Um, as uh, the board knows, we go through every line item of the budget. Um, I think for many people that it's the first time in the budget, they don't realize we do that. We go through every page. Um, there's discussions, debate, uh, and the main goal of all of that is to assess, is this a need? If it is a need, how do we justify it? Not only to those in the room at the budget workshops, but to all stakeholders and voters. Um, so one thing that's come to our attention is a continued use of the term, there's this million dollar windfall. Um, and I just want to address that. Um, yes, if you look in the budget, as there are every year, there's line items that increase and decrease. So just as one could position the budget as a million dollar windfall, you could just as easily position as a million dollar shortfall. For example, 80% of our expenditures are in salaries and benefits. 
uh, as you everyone has available on the website, salary and benefits are going to increase $516,008. Approximately 20% of that is an increase from state mandated cost sharing. So if there's a million dollar windfall, then you could say, well, there's, that's if you exclude salaries and benefits, which are 80% of the expenditures in the district. And as you know, uh, we don't make cars here. We have teachers, staff, it's a people um, endeavor. So salary and benefits to exclude that and as a, not as a windfall or shortfall, I think you don't look at the entire budget. So that's $516,000. As I mentioned, uh, it's been widely noted that there's a reduction in debt service. This is no surprise. Three years ago, we developed a capital stewardship plan. The goal was how do we take care of our schools and facilities without impacting the taxpayer? And a great way to do that was to, quote, reinvest the debt service retirement um, into capital improvement projects. So to say there's a windfall of $500,000 and to ignore the $350,000 increase in capital improvement projects is to ignore a plan that was jointly developed with the town council. So it's okay to say there's a windfall in debt service, but you also need to be mindful that we communicated to parents, stakeholders, taxpayers that we were intending to reinvest that and frankly, if we delivered a budget that had no increase in capital improvement projects, would have been, um, you know, you would have asked why would you trust uh, the joint goal development process. So those two line items alone are $866,000. Yes, state funding is increasing, but we also have a $250,000 reduction in other fee and revenues. We have a $23,000 increase in middle school books and periodicals, which is part of our continuing refreshment cycle. As you know, we have students that um, we obviously consider ourselves a high achieving school district, but we have many students that have needs that aren't met through traditional uh, learning opportunities in Cape Elizabeth. So we're happy to fund a past program that increased $14,500. We also have in the budget uh, NEAS certification costs of $13,400. So if you had a running total of this, we're well over a million dollars offsetting the quote windfall. And lastly, it is important to continue to meet students' needs. Um, and many of our students need summer programming. We had a fantastic pilot program with tangible results that showed significant improvements uh, in student development. And yes, that's $43,000. So uh, while we, there are items in the budget that decline, there's also line item budgets that, de that increase. And the net result is a 1.8% spending increase, which would be below expected inflation next year. So I'm mindful of the necessity to highlight certain items or as like uh, board member David Hellman likes to say, you know, you can't, you can cherry pick certain items. So yes, we have items in decline and items in increase, but every line item was reviewed and we believe is justified. So we're starting tonight's discussion with a budget uh, with a 1.8% spending increase and a 0.6% uh, net tax increase. Thank you, Michael. So we come to the part of our meeting where um, I'm calling for the board to sort of share with us in open deliberations so that Meredith can hear what would be the areas of the budget that you would prioritize that we would want to protect to ensure if by meeting the town council's demand for a 0% tax rate increase, um, what is it that we want to protect in the budget? David, you've heard your answer. Well, I mean, we, we don't, the, the point to be made is we don't have a choice. We were told that we have to cut 110,000. Yes. So for me to say this, the question was, what do we want to preserve? I think it's all necessary. Otherwise, we wouldn't have voted for it. The metric that we used was we went through each line item, um, um, stress tested, and made determinations of what we thought we could and what we thought we couldn't. And we have significant <coughs> risks this year, not only in terms of of, uh, we have a massive capital improvement program which necessarily increases our risk because we tear off a roof we may find a lot more problems 
We have other uh, risks. I, I, there's no way we're going to keep $440,000 from the state of Maine. We've never kept the amount that was initially promised us, as far as I've been on the board for seven or so years. Um, we have one out of district. Play, we have one new IS student come in with a significant need that will put a significant drain. And we've had that happen before. This enormous risk here, um, especially when you. In, 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 um, so, it, I, I could find things that that um, I would say that on a risk benefit analysis, the benefit's slightly less or the risk is slightly less. But I don't. I guess I don't find anything that isn't necessary or needed. I mean, I could find things that are less risk or benefit, but it doesn't mean that there isn't a significant benefit or risk. So I could give you items that I, I would take out only because we're made to, not because I, so I would want to keep everything. Um, I mean, there are certain line items, 50,000 for, um, we were going to spend because it's necessary to improve our software programs because we're, basically paying checks and keeping records by hand as, as opposed to an electronic system. Um, we, we've got an HR person that we're going, to also, we're going to share that with the town. We're also, and the town's not going to now fund it. We also have an HR person we're going to share with the town. Um, um, I don't see as great a need for us as for them. That's another 35000 um, We put more in the contingent uh, account uh, because our enrollment figures are tight. Uh, we're, we're over our guidelines on numerous classes, but we, we believe that was a there was still an appropriate benefit and still an appropriate service we were providing. But we put an extra fifty thousand into our contingency because um, we you know it, it's a it's a something could happen in terms of projections by the time of the summer. That's probably the least amount of risk. But you know I, I can identify small ticket items and medium sized ticket items, but I think all of them collectively are necessary and beneficial. So I just named three things that I still think we need them. Um, and I'd hate for us to be right and all of a sudden we get a bump up in enrollment and don't have the money to pay for it. But Because we can only collect our money once, but we have to find 110000 I guess the... Um I would not like to touch, how are we phrasing this? Uh, I like the, the less risk of benefit. Um, the least uh, risky is furniture. You know, books and furniture are things that um, um, you cross your fingers and you, uh, you work on it. Uh, the teachers will probably, I'd rather have teachers and uh, direct programming to students and that we talk about the, the line items that have to do with the furniture, which I believe, I, I think it's about 35. I don't have the exact um, number off the top of my head, but that line item. And then the new books that um, it's tough because it wasn't so long ago that we had to, we had a, uh, the parents had to fund books for the middle school because the, big, the books are out of date. But I have um, I have trust in our um, our teachers that we will find the out of date copies and we will look at those with the Common Core and we will as we go through curriculum decide um, what not you know that piece of it. Uh, so really, furniture is the only thing I've got that I can offer up. If it's what we want to protect, um, I think we went through uh, all the staffing changes and any staffing change is, is uh, challenging to um, to get comfortable with, but obviously we have to uh, look at the, uh, you know, class size, uh, you know, student population demographics. Um, but excluding the HR director cost share with the town council, um, you know, especially um, demands on our teachers, our ed techs, all our staff. Um, you know, I would not be comfortable uh, making one staffing change other than the cost share uh, with HR director. I think we went through all the class sizes. We went through instructional support. We had three meetings on uh, needs there. And um, if you look at, uh, we obviously know, uh, you know, Teachers would always welcome additional support and ed techs, um, but you know where we are today, 
and looking at our class sizes, I wouldn't, couldn't uh, get comfortable with any salaries or staffing reductions other than the HR director, which is not student facing, which frankly we discussed was the hardest to get, uh, you know, in terms of how it would move the district forward. But other than that, um, I don't think we, personally, I don't, I couldn't get comfortable with any uh, staffing related changes. Mm -hmm. Thank you. John? Um, I, yeah, I, th I think that the question as framed is, you know, is, is it, it, I think the answer is the budget. I, I don't, um, so which is why I think a couple of board members have stood it on its head and, and, and you know, and, and asked what do you, um, you know, what, what would you cut? I, and um, I, I guess I look forward to hearing um, from our superintendent before um, and, and getting a recommendation from, that I assume comes from the superintendent in collaboration with administrators around, um, you know, where, 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 where we can cut with the least impact. So I'll, I'll wait for that. Fair enough. Um, first of all, I want to agree with what Sarah said that I personally have been delighted with the BVR process. The budget goes to the public. And I, like Sarah, um, agree with the fact that uh, I clearly want our town councilors to feel comfortable with it, but also the, the final say by law now goes to the public, and that's an appropriate thumbs up down in my opinion. It feels like with 110,000, um, if we triage this, we've got to, we've, we, I don't want to touch anything that has to do, as Mike said, to, Michael said, any direct services to kids, people, supplies, books. I don't want to cut books. I mean, we, we always ask for books at the 11th hour anyway, so I feel like that's probably a really critical ask. And uh, if, we, if we do need to go deeper than I think we, as a couple of you have said, need to revisit the HR half, the 50,000 in software, which grieves me because I know that we're terribly behind in terms of up upgrading our software. And frankly, that leaves about 15,000 or so, which I'd, I'd pull out of, of uh, our undesignated fund balance and not touch anything else that we have uh, come to agreement as being really critical. I would not be in favor of reducing that contingency as several of you have mentioned. We're in a bit of a precarious spot with three different uh, grade levels around the potential possible need of adding staff. I think a, conting a contingency of about 1% of the budget feels safe uh, to me. So that would be my two cents on it. Thank you. Um, I, I, I don't know how, um, you know, what, I'll be curious to see what the administration has to suggest um, because, again, I, like everybody, I, I can't imagine what there is to offer up. Um, you know, if you, if you think of it in priorities, there's, there's nothing that, it, it's all one. It's all, like, you know, everything's at the top in terms of our priority list. Where it's, not a, it's not a fluffy budget. And um, if, you, if you are going to, gamble and ask to us to cut, then, I mean, uh, the only thing that I can, I can imagine um, would be something that does not impact the, the school at this point, the students, the staff, at, in mm -hmm. any way, um, and that would be either the contingency or the undesignated funds. And that, not that I'm comfortable with that. I mean, I, the beauty, I think, of this budget and the, the, um, the, the care of being fiduciary, um, that's a word, uh, fiscally? fiscally, thank you, You're welcome. responsible mm -hmm. to the whole town is that we want to keep a contingency in the, in the, in the event, you know, that we have to hire more teachers or something does come out mm -hmm. underneath a new roof, you know, and I, I'm, I think that's, it's such responsible banking to, to have the contingency, but I, I feel, either through that or the undesignated funds, that is the only option. 
Um, I do know that having sat through the auditor's meeting that we did last fall in conjunction with the town council, it was recommended that we do set aside a contingency fund of up to 1% of our budget just in case because as both David and Michael pointed out, we can only go to the taxpayers once for this budget. So should something like dryers blow up or kitchen equipment die, which have happened, we are covered for those types of things, that we, we've taken those things out of the contingency fund. And in regards to the undesignated fund balance, I view that as an insurance against unpredictable long-term um, funding from the state because there have been years where we've needed to lean on that undesignated fund so that we don't pass that lower revenue from the state onto the taxpayers. My goal would be to put forth as low a budget as possible but as predictable a budget as possible for the taxpayers so they don't see that yo-yo in demand out of the schools. So because we have so much relied upon uh, the state legislature for our funding which is completely unreliable. Um, so to echo what all of you have said is, you know, I've heard arguments and, and fabulous testimony from our building leadership around the furniture and small children walking up to Principal, Principal Hansen with, Hassan with, with nuts and bolts in their hands saying, I'm not quite sure which piece of furniture this came from. And then how do you feel comfortable putting a 10-year-old back in those chairs not knowing what will happen? Um, where the textbook <coughs> issue is a constant um, evergreen issue with schools. Textbooks are tangible things and I've seen, I'm sorry kids, but I've seen the way my kids have handled their textbooks and I know that you know they're ginger in comparison to some of the other kids in the district. And I also have seen some of the publishing dates on those textbooks and, and they're always due. Um, I'm not sure I can come up with a list of, of what I would like to protect except for the, you know, echoing again, the forward student-facing positions. Our teachers are our lifeblood of our schools. I can't imagine um, taking from any of that. So with that said, uh, Meredith, we would love to hear from <laughs> thank you. Thank you. That made it so easy. Yeah, right? <laughs> no. <laughs> so I want to thank the administrative team um, for sort of rolling up their sleeves in this time frame that we've had to try to pull together um, the changes we've been asked to make. Um, first of all, the accounting software for $50,000 is the first item on our list. Um, while we learned at the meeting with the town council that that was not carried in the town's budget, we understand that's a dynamic process. From our perspective as the department that handles payroll and handles the bulk of purchase orders and um, you know, right now those are done manually and manually the data from those purchase orders is entered into our accounting software. We manually stuff envelopes, yes, in 2015 for payroll um, in this district because our accounting software does not allow us to do that. Um, and you know, while I'm pleased that the town is encouraged that we're making progress there, I will say it has been seven years that we've been waiting on that particular request. So it will be deferred another year because it doesn't make sense for the school department to move forward with that change at a time when the town and that's not a, um, wasn't able to be a priority for the town, but uh, you'll see that request back at some point in the budget. Um, it, it is not the best use of our time and resources to be um, stuffing envelopes today. Um, we had some conversation, I had a um, lengthy conversation with Noel Haroff, our technology coordinator, about the website. Um, uh, again, it, will we get everything we want if we make this reduction? No, but will we be able to make some forward progress? Yes. So he's recommending that we reduce that website development number by 10,000. <coughs> the original number in the budget was 20? 20. 20. 20. Okay. So it's reducing that by half. Um, we have looked at, each of the schools have looked at their lines that, that essentially don't involve staffing and utilities and insurance, those pieces where we have, um, where we annually are sort of building our requests each year. Um, Pond Cove, across equipment, books, and technology equipment, has um, come up with $10,800. The middle school, across supplies, books, equipment, and printing, has come up with $12,000. The high school 
across books, equipment, and testing costs has come up with $17,430. From student and staff support, we have come up with $3,000 out of printing and strategic plan costs. From the office of the superintendent, from supplies, books, and equipment, we've come up with $3,809. And from facilities and transportation, we have come up with $3,500 from Fuel Island and Field Building Maintenance, as well as Bus Radio. What was the student and staff support number? $3,000. And the superintendent supplies printing? Supplies, books, and equipment for $3,809. Thank you. So that gets us to $110,539. Um, we have the same concerns that board members have expressed regarding contingency. We have three grade levels where staffing is right on the cusp of potentially um, necessitating uh, additional teachers. We have significant capital projects online for the coming year, and while uh, some contingency is always built into capital planning, um, we know from experience of our neighbors in South Portland um, that you know finding asbestos in one roof is going to put you into a significant number of dollars that would eat up any contingency built into the roofing project very quickly. Um, we actually had to recently test a roof here at the high school, and fortunately those results were negative, but we have multiple roofs across multiple schools um, where construction is going on. We are you know, reconnecting power to this high school and running new lines. I, I don't know what we'll find when we dig. Hopefully that all works great, um, but you know, th there are significant projects on, online for the summer, and we're concerned about reducing contingency. Um, you know, in terms of carrying forward additional funds from our unexpended fund balance, again, that's all of these are obviously the board's decision. Um, we recognize it, it was part of our multi-year budget plan to reduce that number. We carried forward a significant number last year from our undesignated fund balance because we had we were trying to maintain a reasonable budget. Um, we have risks; they're not diminishing as we move forward and again um, in trying to maintain a healthy reserve to protect the town for um, challenges that may exist within the school district as we move forward we feel it's prudent to, to maintain that that fund balance so. um, can you tell me more about the high school books equipment and particularly the testing suggestion that one stuck out to me principal said do you want to speak to that at all <coughs> for the, um I'm right. sorry, we are being taped. I'm going to have to ask you. <laughs> Thank you, I'm sorry. So coming into this school year for the first time, um, I put into the budget, or into this school year, <clears throat> I put in the budget a $10,000 request, which, which was part of the budget this past year, because it was very uncertain what the state was going to do in terms of supporting the testing that the state had traditionally offered particularly the SAT and the PSATs. Um, so running some numbers, I put that $10,000 figure in. Um, it turned out that the state did, um, sort of after the budget process was all done, uh, offer to pay for one round of testing of the PSATs. Um, and I'm sort of hoping that the and also to continue forward with the ninth grade test we've been giving as well for the last couple of years called the Ready Step Test. So the state did step up at the last minute and pick up some of those costs, which makes me reasonably comfortable as long as they do the same thing again. We don't, I haven't seen anything from the state about it. Um, so there is some risk to it, but um, I guess I feel more comfortable that we can afford to do that. Um, the, the textbooks, the textbook series that I propose to sort of delay the purchase of for another year is for AP statistics. Um, our AP statistics books right now are six years old. Um, they are the youngest of the books that I had originally proposed the purchase of. Um, uh, they're the only one that I think there's any flexibility at all with respect to. Um, so that was what I proposed as far as that goes. 
Um, we are keeping a certain amount of money in the budget to pay because next year we were going to be having a record number of number of students taking AP statistics. So there are some, some new books that we'll have to get uh, to make sure that every student does have a book. But I think we can do that um, and delay the purchase of the AP statistics books if we need to for another year. I have a follow-up question for you, Jeff. So on the back to the testing, the PSAT that you were referring to that we are hoping the state will kick up that cost for, is that for the junior year PSAT testing? So, so what it was is the, the amount, the $10,000 amount that I put in because things were completely up in the air, sort of assumed that we might have to pick, pay for the ninth grade test, the 10th grade test, and the 11th grade test. Um, as it turned out, the only test we had to pick up was one year of the PSETs, I don't honestly remember whether it was 10th grade or 11th grade, but it was one of those years. So the state paid for two of the tests that I was thinking we might end up having to pay for. So just to be clear, those PSAT test results are used for our students to um, enter them into National Merit Scholarship. Yes, they're races. very important. They're very important tests, no question. So I think, but I think the amount that would be remaining in that balance, because there was a $10,000 amount, I'm proposing to cut that in half, and if the state does fund the test the way that it did this year, that that amount will be able to allow us to, to continue with the testing that we've done. I appreciate your thoughtfulness on that. Thank sure. you. I, I'm a little bit confused. Are, are you saying that we still have risk for next year, that they're not going to fund something that we need to do? There's a possibility. I mean, because they don't, they just they always announce what they're paying for in terms of testing in sort of the summertime uh, before the testing is going to happen. So that risk has been there for a long time um, because in the past we didn't carry any money at all for it. Um, so, but I, I guess if there's a risk that I'm, this is a, a cut that I feel reasonably comfortable. I'd love to have the full amount because I would think it would protect us against any risk at all. But um, I think the state came through, as I said, with two of the three tests that I was initially concerned that they might not come through with. Um, I have another follow-up question. So the AP stats textbooks. Yes. As I recall, one of the reasons why our high school was named one of the top 10 STEM high schools in the nation was because of our students' results in our science and AP testing places. Yes, yes, no question. Can I ask too, I think it's important for the public to be aware how much families pay for tests. So an AP test costs what? AP test costs $91.95. 90, 90, paid 90. for completely by families. 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 So if a student's taking five of them, as some of our students are, $450. Yes. Yeah. I, think it's, I think it can be important for our public to understand how much beyond what what we pay for, families pay for. You know, I, I think there's often a lot of tension around uh, families without students in school. And it, and it can be helpful for them to realize between athletic participation fees, AP tests, and additional supplies, what each family additionally carries, which is why I'm pretty opposed to hitting any supply lines in this budget. For for testing, mm -hmm. for anything, supplies. yeah. Well, Jeff, uh, didn't we used to do the SA pay for the SATs for 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 one SATs for students? The state used to pay for one um, SAT. Let me re okay. So that means now our parents pick that, but do we pick it up? Well, it, yes, yes, that's true. This year, yeah, there's an old question on how you can say yes to it. Give, it, it. Right. Give him a chance. This year, this year, parents picked it up. Um, the state did make an offer to allow high school to pay for an SAT if the, if the high schools agreed to give it during a school day. Um, I chose with the support of our staff not to disrupt yet one more day for testing. Um, I, pers I talked with the state and with the college board about whether it was possible for us to get the benefit of to essentially allowed to, to get a state paid for SAT on a Saturday, but it just was not possible. So that's another cost that parents are now picking up that used to be paid for by the state. That's correct. And, and SATs cost how much? More than a PSAT. 
Uh, that's more than a PSAT. It's about double the price of a PSAT. I don't remember exactly how much it is. I think I think it's in the neighborhood of thirty to forty dollars. It is at least one hundred and twenty-five, hundred and forty. For the SAT? Well, the PSAT is ninety-five. If you're saying it's no, the PSAT is relatively cheap. The PSAT is in the neighborhood of ten to twelve dollars. I think the SAT is two to three times that. Um, so the AP exams are considerably more than the SAT. SAT and that sort of stuff, and that's because most of the SAT, most of the AP exams, the SATs and the PSATs can be machine scored. The AP exams can't be. Can, cannot. Right. Jeff, on the on the textbook, um, it, 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 we're just kicking the can down the road. I mean, are we going to yep. replace? So it's this year we can show a low budget number for high school books. We're just going to have a bigger one in the future. So uh, is it uh, a good expectation? You think of students that their books are, are updated. If, if, if you're taking the AP stats, <laughs> don't you, it would it be ideal to have a, a book that actually is aligned with the test you're doing. Is that a tough question, tape. Michael? <laughs> no, I just think it's important <laughs> because it, it, if you're listening, you may say, well, yeah, there's, well, it's only $10,000. It's only, they have a big budget, but you know, you're going you're gonna to have a parent say, why does my son have this book? Well, and if you want to cost a family, well, I'm just saying it's so. What I'm, if you don't get a four or five, you could look at so I'm saying we need to be three or four credits. My point is, seven. you know, oh, okay, seventy thousand four thirty high school. That doesn't sound bad. Oh, that's you know, we're almost there. These are, dip, I mean, these are going to impact students. So it can yes. be less impactful, but you know. It, you know, it's just like capital improvement. You can just say, well, we'll do it next year. We'll do it next year until you have an enormous tax increase because every book in the school district will have to be upgraded. So, well, I, um, I think that's a point that should be emphasized. I'm Michael. sorry, John had his hand up. Can Jeff sit down? Because I was going to change sure. the subject. All right, thank <laughs> Jeff, you, Mr. I, thank we you, Jeff. really appreciate all that information. Thank you. Um, so I, I didn't uh, I didn't count, but a number of school board members mentioned in in the in the preamble to this discussion um, the human resources specialist position shared with the town um, for a cost of uh, in our budget of thirty five thousand um, dollars. Why? Can you explain why you wouldn't? Um, Restore, restore the the Pond Cove equipment and book line, the middle school supplies and printing line, the high school books equipment and testing line. In other words, those areas that are most directly impact students, and and that that adds up to about the same amount as that human resources specialist, which is a, I believe a central office position. Um, uh, our um, as our enrollment declines, um, our our um, employment uh, figures decline as well. We have fewer employees than we than we had projected for next year. Fewer employees than we had this year, and this year we have fewer than we had the year before. Um, so, it's it, it's why wouldn't we postpone that position? And restore those those student facing uh, supplies lines, um, and and you know wait uh, for another time on that human resources specialist. Right, it's certainly a fair question. Um, you know, from our perspective, part of the work of the HR specialist is to help us deal with some file issues. Part of it was to absorb some of the paperwork responsibilities previously carried by the volunteer coordinator as that position transitions into being the volunteer coordinator and the extended learning opportunity coordinator. Um, and part of it is, is frankly, in, in working with the town um, to sort of help us work collaboratively around dealing with um, HR issues. And, and I'll let Scott speak to that in a minute, but, but that arise. Um, is it our top priority in staffing? No, the position doesn't exist yet. Will we find other ways to deal with um, the responsibilities of that position? We have done so in the past. Um, you know, and, and I'll let Scott speak to certainly the pieces in his office that that, that position um, directly relates to, but it, it's definitely a, 
uh, a complex question. And I think, you know, for us, I think we've, we've tried to be good partners with the town. Um, you know, as, as we do our work, our business mm -hmm. office shares responsibility for town and school, and we know we share facilities and transportation, for example. Um, but in terms of the immediate impact for us, is it something that we could defer? Yes, probably. So I don't you. know if you want to speak, Scott, to some of the responsibilities from your perspective in your office. It's a good summary. This um, position actually came about because there was a study done on the um, on behalf of the, the town paid for for human resources for police, fire, and there's a definite need to have consistency in the hiring practices. Uh, common themes around applications, screening process, um, compliance, all OSHA regulations. Um, we do a lot of compliance already in the payroll benefits office. Uh, we've taken on now all the uh, family medical leave for the town. We do all the workers' compensation, unemployment, um, accident investigation already. Um, so there's a, still a huge amount of compliance that needs to we be done. We do accident done. investigation for the police and fire department? Um, if it's workers' comp work related. Right, we're not, we're, we're, not, not investigating we're not investigating, but we're looking traffic to Traffic accidents, we're investigating. No, I understand that, but work-related accidents, there are probably more work-related accidents per capita if you're a police or fire department than if, you're, if, 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 you're, if yeah. you have teachers. Um, yeah. So we have a coordinated workers' compensation program as well. Okay. So, so in other words, we're, really we're already doing an, an awful lot in support of, of town departments. I think we're doing yeah. some, some, and I think the, the idea is that that position would help to expand to that role. Okay. Would it, it be possible, I mean, it occurred to me in the course of the regular budget, but coming in at 1.8, I just didn't give it two thoughts again, but the idea of going from no HR designated person all the way to full with this kind of mandate for us to cut back, wouldn't going to a half-time position make some sense mm -hmm. and evaluate how much they could contribute towards that effort? I, I, that's I mean, on the town side, you know, possible, that, yes. Yeah. Um, and um, they have been, the town side has been using a consultant. I, I'm guessing that we probably could use the services of the consultant and uh, for the future, and that might buy us another year. Mm -hmm. So I think it's doable. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. I would also add the original scope of the HR position proposal was to have it be a, an administrative level position, meaning a director level HR position, and that scope was reduced um, in the course of initial preliminary budget conversations. So that $35,000 as, as for the half, half of that represents a, not a director level position? Correct. That's correct. It re represents a position that would report to, to Scott. To me. Okay. Suzanne, um, just going on the thread of the um, HR, um, shoot, uh, it seems to me that um, the, 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 the reason behind not putting that out for being cut is perhaps to show, like you said, being a good partner to town council, which, you know, I think, um, is, you know, is we want to take the high road. We do, um, and and I, I mean, to me, when I when I was at that meeting and I heard that, I'm like, well, fine. Well, that's the first thing that's going to go. Um, but um, you know, there, there comes a, a point where, in my mind, I guess, you, you, I mean, you can take the high road, but sometimes you have to take the hard road, and sometimes the hard road is not being you know, the good guy. Um, and I would much rather be the bad guy to town council than the bad guy to the students, you know, and the staff. Um, and it just, I, I know a lot of people in the audience are, are wishing that the, the meeting had been videotaped, and so do I. Um, but just to sort of fill in one, one gap, I believe it was Councillor Jordan who was, you know, proposed well, if we're asking school board to, to make this 0% budget, why can't we do this, make a 0% increase? Um, and of course, that was not accepted. So, if, so it makes me feel a little bit more comfortable with, with, with hope, withdrawing the HR position because they're not willing to, at this point, um, meet us halfway. David. Um, I suggested the HR position not, I was not at this, this uh, meeting, so I don't have any issues with what was said there, but quite frankly, I looked at it as, a, as a, a function of all these other equipment, books, and so forth. We're pushing it off 
for a year. We still have to do it. So it's a little bit of uh, funny book um, accounting. We still have to pay for that, whereas an HR person, I still think we need it, but again, on a risk cost benefit, that's a true savings if we don't fund that for a year. That's a true one-time savings. We need it, but it's a true savings. So I would rather do a true savings than a, uh, increase our budget next year by 30 some odd thousand dollars we could have done this year. Hmm. Yeah. I have another question for Scott um, or Meredith, and then maybe Scott, about um, the uh, software. Um, the accounting software. The accounting software. And I guess my question is, um, the town council decided not to spend, um, to allocate that money, to, to put that money in their budget, um, or to take the money out of the budget. But what, how are we doing down the road for how, how um, how's our labor? You know, is there, how's our work on secretaries? How's our, is there anything we can change in the office this year, next year? Will, will it cost savings? Is it like the boiler? Can we get, can we save I, money? Are we going to save $50,000 in the first year? No, no, first three no. Years? But I would say in, yeah, over a three to five year period, are we going to save that amount of money? Yes, yes. I would say. Right. Um, in time that's spent doing some of the manual work that we're doing now that could be done more efficiently. Absolutely. I mean, it impacts us in budget process, it impacts us in accounts payable, it impacts us in payroll. It's, there is a cost attached to using outdated software. Right. And what I'm hearing from you is we're going to see that request for $50,000 next year anyway. I'm um, not, you know, and <laughs> the, the company we're working with, uh, and I, I'm not this is not an intent to disparage them at all, but, but clearly municipalities and schools are not their biggest client. Um, and so our you know, customer service is, is probably not what it might be if, if we were um, right. among their larger clients. You know, they've, they've moved on, I would say, from this work. And you know, I, well, we get limited customer service, so whether they'll continue even to support mm -hmm. The software that we have down the line, I can't say. Right now, we believe that it will still be available to us in the next year. I hear you. I mean, on the HR director, I understand it's a, it's a, you know, it's, there's no person that currently has the position, so we wouldn't be impacting someone's, you know, career, or family. Um, at the same time, you know, there's a many expenses that are funded by the municipal side for the school, so I think. We show that one reason we have uh, a very efficient district is is, is the one town concept. So, um, while well, I think you know it, it gets us there dollars and cents, we also need to be mindful that you know public works um, does a lot uh, for the schools, and we don't carry any part of that budget. Um, the director of facilities, um, you know, there's different shared positions, so. Um, we could ask, is this something given <clears throat> there's a focus on minimizing the tax burden for this year, um, you know, we could always ask or maybe have a recommended budget. One, you know, do you need the HR director this year? If you really need it, we're, we're happy to work collaboratively, school board, town council, but if you think you can defer it for one year, that would, you know, help us provide uh, you know, updated textbooks and some other items. So there's nothing prevents us from giving multiple um, scenarios. Um, just, just my, the, the, I, w I was not suggesting, I don't repeat this, we're not suggesting that it isn't necessary that the town doesn't work collaboratively, excuse me, I couldn't pronounce that properly, uh, with us. It's just that it's a one time savings for one year if we don't have the person. Right, and to show the zero percent, we can defer. There's a lot of things we can defer to show the zero percent this year. Now next year, it's, you know, it's going to. But, but if you defer this person for one year, you do save the cost right. for one year. Exactly. All these other things we're deferring, we're still going to have to pick it up, whether it's next year or this year. It's not a true savings, whereas that is a true savings. Right. Susanna. I just want to, I'm, I'm a little bit unclear about the um, software costs because that was that was one thing I, that I kind of glossed over. I knew that it was an important thing. I knew that it would aid in the whole payroll and accounting um, angle immensely. Um, so I figured it was a no-brainer. 
Um, but but I was surprised when, and I think we all were surprised when the uh, town council or the town manager told us that they were withdrawing, they weren't going to submit that in their budget. But what I don't understand is what is the total cost? I and mean, we were going to do that together. So if they were withdrawing, uh, and, and if we still wanted to buy it, how does, I, I just want to know it the It would price. be about a $100,000 cost in the yes. first year because you're you're not only purchasing the software but you're you're working through the entire installation process okay. and the training process. And we were un we were had been until last week under the impression that everybody agreed, town council and school board, and we were going to put both sides we were going to yes. um, contribute. I mean, equally. understanding that budget is a dynamic process and right. people right. have to prioritize. But yes, we were under that okay. impression. All right, so we can't really go it alone. I mean, it's not like no. they're going to take their fifty out and no, so they are fifty. But right. so, so I think I'd like to ask my fellow board members, at this point, do we have enough sort of fodder to maybe discuss some options that might be before us as to what to propose to the town council? I know that you know, Superintendent Nadeau and the district leadership, we thank you immensely for your work on this, especially in such a short time frame. But how do we now take all of this input from what we've decided to protect, what we've decided that might be okay to cut, and the suggestions from the superintendent and hearing, getting out some of these ideas, um, how might we like to proceed from here? I, I'd be happy, just one question, of the, the Pond Cove Middle School, High School, staff and student, how much, do we have a rough estimate of textbooks, how much that would be? Um, I mean, let's is that? See. I can figure that out for you if you give me a minute. Okay. <laughs> but I might need two other people to help me with that. <laughs> what I was looking at, Michael, is if we um, remove the HR person from our side of the spreadsheet and restored the Pond Cove Middle School High School supplies text printing equipment lines were at a difference of $5,230. Mm -hmm. so, sorry, I'm sorry, we're, what are you right, if, what you, you, if you add Pond Cove Middle School High School, the 10,800, 12,000, 17,430, that would add to a number where if you backed out HR director or it was similar to your John's comment. Right. Right. They're, they're it would leave five thousand two hundred thirty dollars. About four thousand yeah. different. That we would still need to cut. Yeah. Yeah. Three here. Three. Right. So it's yeah. twenty two. Would be 10, 8, 12, and 17, 30. So that's 22, 39, right? Are you, this is the number, the total? So why is, so it's not, so if we. The HR was just 35,000. Okay. That's how that was the balance. Either they'd have to cut out of the school or come up with someone else. So you would need to make that number right there. Right. Sorry, it took me a minute on the textbook answer, but I wanted to make sure I gave you the right information. So at Pond Cove, the textbook number is 1,800. At the middle school, it's 3,500. And at the high school, it's 6,450. What was that again? I'm sorry. 1,800 at Pond Cove, 3,500 at the middle school, and 6,450 at the high school. $11,750. So there's obviously a lot more in it than just books. <coughs> well, yes, those lines are combinations of supplies, books, equipment, testing. Is that where the furniture is too? Furniture, yep. So the books themselves were 11750 So, so if if 
if if under that concept we need another five thousand dollars in savings um, is that something we can somehow get out of the I guess you could get it out of the other two lines the student and right so just because I was I only half heard the conversation right. while I was checking numbers but but what I think I heard was you wanted instead of the monies from Pond Cove the middle school and the high school that involved equipment and books you were looking to reduce the HR director for 35000 which leaves roughly $5,000 from across those lines to be distributed. Right. So and if the question is, can we do that across equipment um, and testing costs without impacting the books line, the textbook line, yes, we could do that. So I'm seeing the HR director half cost is 35000 mm -hmm. Correct. But, and if we were to add up the equipment, in books and supplies on Pond Cove Middle School and High School, I get 32 plus? We need. It's 17, 4, 30, 12, and 10, 8, so it's about 40,000. 40,230. 40, and so you'd have to, if you took the 35,000 away, you'd have to raise then the $5,230. would be the difference. But that also assumes that we're taking out the 50,000 on software and the 10,000 on the website? Yes. Yes. And, and the 3,500 facilities in the island and the bus radio. Well, 38 for super, 3,500 facility, 3,000 for I, I right. down student, student and staff support. Student and staff support. I mean, if we're really going to drill down at all, we ought to look at them all. Are these are these other three items, I know you call them printing, supplies, books, equipment. Is it how do you save on $3,000 on printing? You just not print things that you otherwise need? But I feel it's kind of <laughs> silly we're sitting down counting thousands of dollars to find an arbitrary 110000 but... We are, though, David, so... I know. <laughs> I just remember five or six years ago going over to Sam's Club and buying all kinds of paper towels and all kinds of things and giving them to the schools. I feel like I now have to do it again to reach some arbitrary line item. So if we had a, the counting is 50, HR director is 35, that's 85. Website is 10, that's 95. Uh, facilities, student, and office of superintendent would be an additional, what is that, uh, 10,309? Correct. Yeah. Something like that. Um, Where's that get us? Still about whatever the number Scott just gave you was. 5,230 5, dollars short. <laughs> short. Yeah. So 15. But if we ask the question, can you find that in those yeah. three lines, you could yeah. find that that's savings in those three lines. Across so in other words, equipment, yeah. technology, testing, um, and printing in the three schools. Yes. Instead of 40,000, we ask them to find five. Right. Well, that's the, I right. guess what John's asking is, can you find it without touching the books, which seems to be yes. Yes. The, the answer. She said yes, yes, to yes that. I didn't, yeah. I must have mis misheard that, or not, didn't hear it. That would... So what, be what reasonably about palatable. Five thousand out of cons we're looking for five thousand more. What no, oh. it's she's. <clears throat> well, the the question was, could we find across equipment, technology, supplies, printing, and testing costs within the three schools? So setting books aside, mm -hmm. could we come up with five thousand two hundred and thirty dollars? The answer is yes. We've already identified more than that in that forty thousand. Mm -hmm. So instead of reducing thirty thousand. In those areas, we're going to be reducing. We would be reducing five, if that's what you asked. Instead of reducing do. forty thousand in those areas. Hmm. Right. Well, yeah. we've taken books out. Which oh, gotcha. By books out. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Almost twelve. Yeah. Hmm. All right. I just have to ask: Is the bus radio um, a safety issue, or a? Uh, it's a. It's on the list. So is it on the list? For it's not entirely reducing it. It's reducing some of the maintenance and upgrade costs so we would uh, again we would defer we're deferring it yes i mean to be clear none of these items would be in the budget if they weren't requested because they were needed at some point and every time we turn deferred maintenance as david has pointed out we have we, th we have to do that maintenance that's why we had a 1.7 million dollar bond because the school department had been forced to de defer maintenance year after year after year on 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 buildings. And we've then. deferred purchasing furniture. We've deferred purchasing textbooks. Right. So 
it's not a it, it, it isn't a savings it's just postponing a cost but you know uh, I do support and uh, if we decide to go this route if there is a need for an HR director next year I, you know even though there's no person this wouldn't preclude us just like it wouldn't preclude us from having the accounting software again in a future um, the but, only unknown is we don't know what next year's revenue is from the state oh, or no. what other increases are for right. insurances or staffing because we've got all four uh, right. bargaining units on the table. But so in a zero like tax rate mandate to add, I agree, to add a new administrative central office position in lieu of student facing and teacher needed supplies, textbooks would be hard to look someone straight in the face so just to understand all the risks with that by we are increasing our risk by not having an hr person by having non-standardized application forms non-standardized employment rules so, we run some risks as a community we do i would say as a school department so, we have standardized yes. employment process and hiring process and applications they all go through one person andrea fuller in our central office so we just increase that mm -hmm. that's why i was hoping that the, the, the town might see fit to get a half time position started mm -hmm. at least for their side of, of the management. They could do that. Mm -hmm. I assume it's kind of hard to hire a half-time person for employment HR position. I know a lot of people in Portland are trying to hire HR people here. They're not that common if they have any quality. I think they're there for part-time. So the risk the is, you know, we put in some zero percent this year, but who knows then what the potential increase that we'll absolutely need next year? It'll be a yo-yo effect, which I was hoping we could avoid. Well, I, I think what we're doing is pushing to a year, which I will be stunned if we get another increase next year. I'll, I'm fairly sure we'll, we'll be less state revenue next year. We're pushing costs into a year. We'll have less outside revenue. It's what we're doing, but we're being forced to do it. It's, it's. Imprudent accounting, in in one sense, but because I think our first one was prudent, I think we're now just pushing costs into next year when we have have a, a greater revenue problem. That's why when you have a little bit of a bump in revenue, you try to spread it out over a couple of years, which is why I suggested early on, because I don't think we're going to get 440,000 from the state that we put some of that into the undesignated reserve or something, because I don't think we'll get it, and I know we won't get it next year. We're going to have we'll probably have less next year, which is about to come up even more money. But that's what we're right. forced to do. So that said, um, I'm cognizant of we could debate that issue all night. I don't think any of us want to go through this exercise. That's I wasn't quite trying clear. to debate. I was just trying to put mm -hmm. on the record what we're being forced to do. So noted. Um, we still need to come up with a suggestion. So back to um, circling back to the question that I had put on the table a few moments ago, and I believe we're moving down towards that path. How can we? come together and come up with some proposal to put before the town council. I suggest uh, we put forward one revised recommended budget that is our current budget excluding the accounting software of 50,000 and we say that's our recommended budget, a revised recommended budget. The 50,000 we learned about after we had voted on our own budget, and um, obviously we don't can't share that. That's budget number one, mm -hmm. and then budget number two is uh, the zero percent net tax rate budget that has the line items we discuss: accounting of fifty thousand, the HR director of thirty-five thousand, website of ten thousand. Uh, the facility student office of superintendent would be that adds up to ten thousand three hundred nine, I believe. And That's then we'll great. say uh, middle Pond Cove middle school high school, um, you know, non textbook um, expenditures of five thousand two hundred thirty. And then maybe the town council will say you you know you got halfway there through the accounting software. And you know we we do need the HR director, so they choose recommended budget one, and then if they want zero percent, they they get recommended budget two. This is a legal question. I, before we do that, can we submit 
two proposed budgets, or do we have to submit one? Um, so we were asked to bring forward a 0% budget. They've already put that number on for the public hearing. So certainly we're going to be asked to provide information. What I understood from the town council at that meeting was that we'd be asked to provide information about what the impact is of that. I would say that Michael's suggestion says here's what the impact is of that. So um, we're providing two scenarios, but still our original budget? I'm no, no. The, the original budget no longer exists. Yes. The new budget is the zero percent. Even though the town council didn't vote on it, just the finance committee? The finance committee is a committee of the whole. Right, but still not the town council and the public hearing. So, the, so they set the number to move forward to public hearing. Following the public hearing, the town council ta takes a vote mm -hmm. um, on the budget to send forth to referendum. And so they can choose to accept the budget at a zero percent, they can choose to add or decrease that number. Mm -hmm. and, and help them, give them uh, another option. You know, if you say here's the here's a zero percent, or here's the recommended school budget, same as it was before. It just takes out the fifty thousand dollars we were notified of at the the finance committee, of the town council, and here's another. Here's the zero percent budget, and if they can increase, decrease, choose the same, that means they can cha do what, you know, mm -hmm. I would be like to provide them what the differences are and let them well, give them more options. Right. I mean, ultimately, we would love the voters to decide. However, well, sure. we are not given that option. But it also sounds to David's point, legally, if they really want the HR person they would restore thirty-five thousand to us, but we still would decide what to do with thirty-five thousand. Right. right cause I'm glad you ended it that way because they can't uh, line right. item us. Right. So I think that's correct. All they can do is come up with a figure. Right. They can't. Mm -hmm. And quite frankly, um, if they want to put another thirty-five in there, I'm not sure that I would do that. I mean, I'm not all this stuff about supplies and equipment. That's all stuff we need. We're probably going to need some form. So, but. Testing. Yeah. Oh, we don't need to test. <laughs> I don't know the so, legal ramifications, but you can always. I think there's nothing wrong with most meeting. people like options, and if, yeah. you know, here's a school board recommended budget we revise solely for the fifty thousand um, that if we knew about before we voted on the budget, you know, we would have probably done that anyway, and here's. The zero percent budget. You know, I'm not so sure we would have done it anyway, knowing that it was a cost that we were going to incur later. But but we uh, yeah, yeah. It, we, we don't know. We didn't have the information and the time to make an intelligent decision on that. Um, June twelfth. <laughs> I support Michael's proposal. Yep. So as I echo Michael's proposal, just so we're clear, we needed to come up with $110,539 in savings. That's $50,000 in software, $35,000 in an HR director, $10,000 for a website, um, and $10,309 for the superintendent and student and staff support and, and, and facilities. Student and staff support and facilities. Yeah. And then, five. And then the 5,230, which are um, supplies and miscellaneous minus the textbook expenditures out of Pound Cove Middle School and High School. Right. Right. Okay. Michael also wants a uh, budget B or budget A or whatever you want to call it. A 50,000. Yeah. It took us two hours to get to budget A. All I have to do to get budget B is take our current budget and uh, subtract $50,000. I like we, that too. We, we can... And only reduce our budget by 50000 The accounting software. Mm -hmm. I mean, they just need numbers. This isn't... Yeah, right. We don't... You could do uh, a summary page on those three right. options. Right. Well, in fairness of transparency for our mm -hmm. constituents and for our teachers and our administrators and parents, I think it's only fair that we deliberate in public and on, and, and come up with line item numbers. No, I, I right, right. Think but I'm saying okay. Right, we so can they pick number A. We go this way. We pick number B. We go that way. And we've already told everybody what we would cut if we vote to approve it. If, if they, hmm? if oh, the yeah. voters. Vote. No, if we 
We haven't yet taken a vote. No, we haven't taken, vote. taken a vote yet. So in budget B. Is that, we just have a 0% tax rate budget. Here's the line items that we it would involve. Here's a revised recommended school budget that would have just one line item, the county software. Reduced. Right, right reduced. So the tax impact of that, I, instead of 0. 0.6, would be 0. 0.3. 0. 0.3. Um, can we have the can you hold that option, thought? which is can you hold higher? That? Let's hold that thought. Oh, yeah. Because flip oh, we're tape. flipping tape. Oh, oh, flipping oh, tape. It always reminds me of eight tracks. I'm in the middle of a great song, but you have to pause <laughs> while you're waiting for the... Not that I'm old enough to remember I was going to say. No, no, no. <laughs> I've, I've heard I'm stories. <laughs> well, it just means we have to shove the cake in the groom's face a second time, that's all. <laughs> Three, two, one. Okay, so as you were saying, Michael. Susanna. Sure. Susanna. Susanna. Oh, My apologies. Uh, can we give a third option, if we want a lot of options, which is to ask, just ask for the original or ask for more? <laughs> <laughs> Can we go back to the original budget request as a third option? Because I think a lot of people would love to see that. Can we do that? Or we you, you can do it if you can do the other. Well, the deferred software is a deferred software. I mean, I'm not sure how that would help us to go back to the original. Oh, that's true. Okay. Well, well it means actually, that we, I we, think we it basically um, pre buy pre buy it. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm not going to pre-buy it, but you put it aside Set aside. for a prudent planning. Pay for it yeah. June 25th. To be honest with you, I'll, I'll flog the contingency line again because if it, you know, that means we have 50000 sitting in a contingency fund that we don't have to use it, we don't have to use it. Mm -hmm. Well, there's money sitting in an account to replace Hannaford Field. We're not going to use it this year, but we know that cost is mm -hmm. coming. Mm -hmm. So I like option C, just go back to the council and request that they fund us for a full budget. Mm -hmm. A, B, C, there you go, that's clear. So original budget is A, mm -hmm. B is one less the accounting software, yep. and Z is a 0% tax rate. Right. Mm -hmm. The way you listed it for us. Mm -hmm. Can we list them in order of our preferences? <laughs> yes. I think we have. <laughs> <laughs> I noticed Michael changed it. Cause I didn't <laughs> That original budget is a original, just less the accounting software because that was communicated to us after we had approved our budget, and then there's C, the zero percent tax rate. Right. Um, are you putting that forth as a your chair of the finance committee as our proposal? I, uh, well, we have to vote on something at some point. We I do. Assume. Yeah, do we have any other motion. further discussion before we move into deciding mode? No. So, Michael, would you like to make a final proposal for us to vote on? Uh, yes. I was trying to figure out this. The, uh, well, we already submitted our original budget, so there's not much work to do there. Uh, just everyone says budget B would be the original budget less the 50000 that the town chose not to co-fund, and then C would be the 0% tax, which would be the line items we discussed, the accounting, HR director, website, facility, student office, superintendent, 10,309, and then other Pond Cove High School, middle school line items, excluding textbooks of 5,230. Um, so we've never done this before. Do we have to give dollar number budget? We yeah, um, really, it's a 0% budget. We know that your expenditure budget in this proposal is reduced by $110,539. It's going to take us a little bit of time to update your categories for that budget. Uh, mm -hmm. We will have that done prior to the town council's meeting next week because ultimately that summary, the category summary, has, is part of what's mm -hmm. shared with voters. Right. We have to be able to report by categories, so we'll need to update that information for you pending this vote, and we will post that information. Okay. So, so could we have this sheet that says uh, original and then a line item that just says B uh, less the accounting okay. and then C just has the 0%. Right. Yes. And, and at the total, instead of the spending in 1.8, we could just have a net tax rate line. Okay. Is everyone okay with that disclosure? Yeah. You say net tax rate or net expense? 
Uh, what will have both? It will have total expenditure increase and then the net tax rate. Okay. With the school both. department only it's tax good. rate. I think it's yeah. important to have the tax. The net to taxes. Is well, that it's not net to taxes. Yeah, just the tax net rate, tax school rate. department tax rate. So all those in favor of the option A, B, and C that Michael just outlined? May I second it first? Second it. Yeah. Well, okay. it's, is it a business meeting where we... Well, if you're making a motion, though, to adopt this, it's probably good to... Okay, formally, so, so you've made your motion. Barbara I'm seconded. seconded. Thank you. All those in favor? Seven. Seven. Do we have any other comments, or do I have a motion to adjourn? So the only other thing that I would um, point out to the board as a couple of people have pointed out, our state revenue is still somewhat uncertain. Um, in the past, the town council has had a warrant article that says in the event of additional appropriation that those funds go directly back to taxpayers. Um, again, I'm, I don't know if, if that is a recommendation that the board would make, um, but I would say it's worth sort of being aware that that's a motion that has been made historically. Um, I don't know whether we'll receive additional funds. If we do receive additional funds, clearly we would reduce some expenditures and might have, you know, a place where we would like to allocate those funds. So I would just raise that as a mm. point of discussion. Or and what has happened when it's been lower than projected? Um, last year, that did happen for us, and the town covered the differences in those costs. So, but only through a, a one-time special motion. Sp well, it was a spe special, it was a one-time, if I'm not correct, not mistaken, it was a one-time um, uh, protection that was extended by the town council on the, ba uh, on the basis of unique circumstances. Mm -hmm. um, and that's not been historically what, what they, that's not a protection that they've offered the school department on an annual basis. Um, historically, if we if the if there's a mid-year curtailment, the school department absorbs the losses. Mm -hmm. um, although at times the town council has also at that time vo uh, volunteered to contribute to help offset those losses. Um, but only once did we have an advance protection in place with the town council uh, in the event of a of a curtailment. Well, so we, what actions are we able to take at this juncture? I, I don't know that there's any action that the board can take. The board could certainly you know, recommend right. for or against those motions, but it's, it's ultimately the town council's decision. I just think it's important that you be aware Surface that those them. motions yeah. are part of the deliberation for the council at their public hearing or subsequent to the public hearing. In other words, when we present, when we present this, if uh, we might ask that in light of the, 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 the cap, the tax rate cap, that we, we would appreciate that if there were additional state funds, that those funds did go to the school department to help offset the, the cuts that we've had to make. In, in my experience, in similar circumstances, that would not be an unusual request, right. that if a town <laughs> body sets a, a number and right. state aid changes, that that would be a request. And similarly, we would make the motion should the revenue become less. Right. Do we be held harmless? And, and that's how it was worded last year, mm -hmm. the motion. Mm -hmm. Okay. Why do we, when will the agenda be posted so we could see what is in um, for the to town council? I do not know typically I, by Wednesday. Wednesday. I have that's to, what we anticipate. Tomorrow I have to have We have to update right. the numbers. So can we... 11 votes that they have to take. I've done that tomorrow. Um, the manager asked I submit it with the understanding that it's gonna, it may change. Okay. So why don't, why don't we... This is part of the packet. Would it be okay to have the... Well, we, I'll look at it, then we can circulate and see what it says and what mm -hmm. we may want to recommend as an additional consideration. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it seems like we could come up with a way of suggesting if funds come in at 110,000, we're allowed to restore 
our budget, or even at 60 something minus the deferred mm -hmm. software. But if it comes in below, that they would also be willing to make us whole given we went all the way down to zero. So sort of a window of funding up or down mm -hmm. that they might be willing to. Feeling in the floor? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And if it was greater, then it would go, go back, back to, to the, the taxpayers. A, A, B, and C strategy. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> a second. <laughs> we'll let you explain that, Michael. Okay. <laughs> Um, thank you for that consideration and that conversation. Is there any other further discussion this evening? Just before everybody leaves, if they would sign warrants, if they haven't signed warrants, we'll sign Certainly. a party here. Do you have a signature page for every one of them? I do. Okay. Any other discussion before we adjourn? I really would like to express my sincere appreciation for this less than happy conversation. Um, I appreciate you respectfully talking about a rather uncomfortable topic. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. And to the leadership team for making some painful, putting some painful things on the table. Right. So and in very short order. Exactly. Yeah. So thank you for thank that. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.